Why do you think that in academia, resistance exercise has been overlooked in its effects on the cardiovascular system, and that strength and cardiovascular exercise have been perceived as completely different or separate entities? Okay. Um, I've, there are various things that have contributed to uh, what, what I've um, termed and, and, and what others have termed as well is, is a, f a false dichotomy between strength training or resistance training and uh, traditional aerobic or cardiovascular or endurance training, whatever label it happens to be given at the time it's being discussed. Um, and, and from my understanding, it all started off really back in the 70s when uh, Dr. Kenneth Cooper um, started out the concept of aerobics, um, trying to break down the anaerobic and the uh, aerobic metabolic pathways and trying to elucidate um, a form of exercise that would just isolate the aerobic pathway and um, just ignoring the fact that the two are intrinsically linked yeah. and that the aerobic pathway uses the metabolic end product of the anaerobic pathway uh, to produce ATP through uh, ana uh, aerobic glycolysis. Um, and, but that really set the foundation. Um, at that point people started dichotomizing aerobic and anaerobic exercise when really it lies on a spectrum and um, regardless of which end you're at there will be anaerobic and aerobic processes going on the anaerobic processes will always feed into the aerobic processes um, and the only thing that changes as you increase the intensity is the proportion or the ratio of energy being provided by each one anaerobic processes can increase uh, exponentially compared to aerobic uh, processes but just because the ratio of energy production changes, it doesn't matter. You can, uh, what happens is at one end of the scale, you still have maximal aerobic and anaerobic uh, stimulation. Um, but anyway, this, this kind of really dichotomized it. And, um, and what happened was is recommendations started being made with regards to what they called anaerobic exercise, which was determined as being short, sharp, uh, you know, uh, intense exercise, because they knew that the proportion of energy being provided through that type of exercise was greater, came to a greater degree from the anaerobic pathways, um, whereas in long, slow, endurance type activities, the proportion of energy being provided was more uh, from the aerobic pathways. And, and because strength training was typically short and intense, uh, it was added to this dichotomy in terms of anaerobic exercise. Uh, more recently, study into the molecular pathways has uh, came up with this AMPK pathway, which I uh, described earlier, and a pathway called uh, mammalian target of rapamycin, which is uh, or mTOR, which instigates kind of protein synthesis and various adaptations, which end up contributing to muscular adaptations or strength adaptations. Um, and the early research done with this showed that AMPK inhibited mTOR and vice versa. So what happened was is um, this rat study was done with very poorly designed training programs which were intended to mimic endurance or resistance training, which did a very poor job of doing so. Intensity wasn't controlled, the participants were rats. Um, but immediately after this study was published, uh, Various different exercise physiologists, prominent exercise physiologists, jumped on the paper, published various review articles uh, showing that this, you know, further solidifies and proves this dichotomy which everyone's kind of latched onto. Uh, it wasn't until slightly after that paper had been published, later the next year, that um, a study was done in humans showing that acute, uh, like immediately uh, during and immediately after intense resistance training, leg extension exercise was chosen because it's nice and easy to isolate the effects. Um, AMPK went up through the roof and it wasn't until a few hours after that it came down and mTOR came back up. Uh, and what that meant was is intense resistance training did actually increase both, stimulate both pathways to produce both adaptations. Which With slightly different times. Exactly, yeah. it was just the time scales um, and and the understanding of why, it's easy to understand why AMPK works when you train intensely to failure because it's that change in the AMP to ATP ratio um, and it seems to be, you know, the tension and, uh, and the actual resistance load used and the uh, intensity that also increases mTOR activation. But certainly this paper went, went to help and, sh help and show that um, that dichotomy w wasn't really true um, both you know uh, molecular pathways were stimulated and as the training study showed cardiovascular fitness improves various other different things that contribute to cardiovascular fitness improve all with resistance training as long as the intensity is high and it's taking a long time to undo the damage done absolutely yeah yeah a huge but you're, amount you're at the cutting edge of doing that now <laughs> i hope so yeah